Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by Blue Apron. Blue Apron, of course, is the great service that prepares you in advance ingredients and portions and recipes for you to cook at home with your friends, families, and significant others. All summer long, Blue Apron's teamed up with Bob's Burgers to promote burgers from the show. And the week of September 17th is the premiere of Bob's Burgers on Fox, which is really cool about that, is that this week's recipe for that show is the absentee shallot burger. This burger is being displayed in the show. So if you order it this week, you actually can make this burger at home. Now, while all you guys at home are gonna be ordering burgers, I myself have been trying to cut back on the red meat. So I decided to do some saffron pasta, focusing on some veggies and wheat pasta. So let's get right to it. Blue Apron recipes and ingredients are delivered to your house in a refrigerated box. So even if you're not at home, they stay chill until you're ready to be home to get it no trips to the grocery store, and no waste from unused ingredients. They offer two type of plans, the two person plan and the family plan. There's eight recipes to choose from each week and you can choose from any combinations you'd like. And the best part, there's no commitment. You can skip or cancel the service at any time with meals starting as low as 7.49. To sign up for Blue Apron today, click the link in the description box down below. The first 50 people to sign up today will get $50 off your first two weeks of Blue Apron. So I hope you guys enjoy cooking like I did today. And once again, thank you to our sponsor today, Blue Apron, for being awesome. The Legend of Zelda series is well known for reinventing itself in nearly every entry. The core story almost always contains similar elements. A young hero must heed the call to action and stop evil from conquering the land by using the power of the Triforce and the Master Sword. And players keep coming back for fresh gameplay, clever puzzles, and incredible presentation. It's not a stretch to say that almost everyone loves Zelda games, but The Wind Waker is an incredibly divisive game. The art direction is striking but at the time of the original release, many players reacted negatively to the cel-shaded graphics. Wind Waker HD is the perfect opportunity to revisit and see if modern tweaks help cement this game as a classic, or something best lost as a relic of its time. Let's see which way the wind blows when I complete The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker is actually not only one of the few Zelda games that I don't know inside and out, but it's literally one that I've never played. That's right, I have never played Wind Waker before. So today, guys, I am so hyped, I am so ready, we're talking The Legend of Zelda and Pirates, my favorite. <sighs> I am ready for anything. Yes! Right. Original Wind Waker was a game that had some pretty big iron boots to fill. Ocarina of Time was and still is regarded as one of the best Zelda games ever, and Majora's Mask used Ocarina's engine to create a unique and melancholy adventure. Wind Waker, the first Zelda game for the GameCube, had perhaps unreasonable expectations to live up to. Nintendo, however, did what they do best do their own thing. One thing you can say about the big N, ain't nobody telling them what to do. In the early 2000s, there was a tech demo for the GameCube that debuted at Space World. Looking back, it isn't particularly striking. But at the time, fans were floored at the footage of Ganondorf and Link dueling and became convinced that the next Zelda would be moody and dark, featuring a grown-up protagonist. Because everyone knows that if something is moody and dark, it's mature. Nope, not today. What we wound up with instead was a Zelda game with a visual style unlike any other. Wind Waker looks like a gorgeous cartoon, and almost every aspect of its gameplay is derived from the colorful, vibrant look. Just goes to show that sometimes defying expectations can lead to amazing results. Which is why I'm dropping everything and being a stowaway. That's right, I'm finally going to run away and join a pirate crew. 
While some game critics at the time of release didn't love the stylistic choices that Eiji Anuma chose for The Wind Waker, the game has since been heralded as one of the GameCube's best. It certainly aged beautifully, better than many games from that same era. The HD version pops even more than the original. Now if there was only a way to HD myself. It's weird, even before playing Wind Waker, I felt like I knew the characters already. I've been playing a ton of Hyrule Warriors ever since my epic train ride up to Nintendo in Seattle. Because of the Wind Waker quests, I'm familiar with Tetra and Medley. Guess it's time to appreciate these characters in their source material. Wind Waker is just this side of an open world game, the closest the series had come before 2017's Breath of the Wild. The original Wind Waker caught some flack after release for having pacing issues, but Wind Waker HD apparently takes several steps to remedy that, which should help me complete this game in a more reasonable fashion. Players have a ton of freedom in this waterlogged world, and I am super excited to sail the seas and live out my Blackbeard fantasies. Yar! First up, I'll have to beat the game. I'll take Link through the waves of the Great Sea and over to wherever Ganondorf is hiding. There are the usual MacGuffins in this game, but instead of medallions, sacred instruments, or masks, I'll be finding three goddess pearls, and of course, Triforce shards. So, I'll gather up all the shiny bits and confront everybody's favorite redheaded daddy. I feel like Ganondorf has a prime opportunity in this game to take a freaking vacation. He's in Hyrule's version of Hawaii. Stop plotting world domination and work on a tan, my dude. Another thing I'll have to do is chart my progress. Literally, with charts. One thing this game is supposed to do very well is provide a sense of seafaring adventure. I'll have to fill out every square of the map by giving bait to fish who will then draw on my chart. Art. Totally normal. But with my cartography skills fully weaponized, there's nothing I won't be able to navigate by the end of the game. Next, I'll explore the second quest, which is basically a New Game Plus-like mode, and is available after completing the main story once. There are supposed to be a couple of fun differences when you play the game through a second time, and due to my obsessive nature, you just know I've gotta rock my blue pajamas like the time I forgot to change before I came to the office. Every member of my crew is still scarred. And lastly, through all of this, I'll be completing the main main optional collectible task in the game, filling out the Nintendo Gallery. I'll be using the Picto Box to take photos of practically every character and enemy in the game, and exchanging those for photos for figurines. This is supposed to be a pretty time-consuming task in the original game, but as long as my camera hands remain steady, I'll be able to snag all of these no problemo. Selfie time! Since I've played a couple of Zelda games before this one, I have a good idea of what to expect for full completion. Heart containers, magic meter upgrades, capacity upgrades for my wallet, arrows, bombs, and whatever the equivalent of a Deku Nut is in this game. I know there will be at least one extremely extravagant fetch quest leading to an exotic item, and of course I'll have to learn how to use a musical instrument. In this case, I'll be conducting up a storm with the Wind Waker, like I'm Gustavo Dudamel. He's basically like the Elvis of conductors. Or like, Drake? Who's up with the kids nowadays? I don't f know. Zelda games are usually a pleasure to complete because of how cohesive the entire experience is. A Zelda game is like eating a burrito. Each individual ingredient contributes to the whole, resulting in a satisfying meal that eventually leads to the bathroom. And hey, since I'm playing this on Wii U, this even makes more sense. Wind Waker is a smart reinvigoration of Zelda games, from plot to presentation. While many beats and mechanics are obviously drawn from older games in the series, Wind Waker takes the franchise in a new direction with a bold and uncompromising visual style that is aged like fine wine. The game takes a lot of chances and most of them pay off, with any rough edges from the original game sanded down into a more manageable form in the HD remake. It is Link's birthday, and he's officially going to come of age. Just as he's getting ready to celebrate, a giant bird being chased by a pirate ship drops a woman named Tetra into the nearby forest, and Link decides to rescue her. Tetra is saved, but then the bird captures Link's sister, Errol, and flies off with her. 
After a little encouragement, Tetra agrees to help Link sail off to rescue his family member, and then the adventure begins. Disturbingly, this is almost exactly what happened during my 16th birthday party, right down to the giant bird. Despite the cartoony visuals, the plot is really engaging and interesting. For people who are hardcore into Zelda lore, there are tons of easter eggs and nods to other games in the series. Wind Waker presents a world that seems totally different from other Zelda games, but about halfway through the game, a big twist helps the player realize that they're more connected to Hyrule's history than they could have ever imagined. It's kind of like digging through your old glove compartment and finding Captain Falcon's old registration proving that you're driving his old car. More than most Zelda games, Wind Waker embraces an adventuring aesthetic. Link can't trudge across the land on foot, so he learns everything he needs to know about being a sailor. Well, almost everything. The tone of this game bleeds excitement and opportunity. There's always a sense of excitement to see what new island is going to appear over the horizon. The sound team knocks it out of the park, and the composers deserve all the sucking treasure that I can haul up for them. The music feels truly timeless, and even changes depending on where Link is and what the weather looks like. Kudos! Character animations in The Wind Waker are incredibly lively. Characters often look and act larger than life, but it fits perfectly with the tone of the game. Just look at the way Link's eyes do that shifty thing. Yeah, I know Simpsons did it first, but it's great to see it in action here. I love the character models in this game. Once again, everything is inspired by the sea. There are both Coblin pirates who carry telescopes around with them, and traders who wear bandanas to stay comfy in the hot sun. Ganondorf's design in this game is iconic. He looks regal yet powerful, sinister but also stylish as hell. But nothing can beat my two favorite character models, Snot Kid and Fat Little Pigs that roam around Outset Island. Outrageously cute! The sound effects and little voice blurbs are pure Zelda, cute and to the point. I particularly love all the fishmen who appear when you feed them bait in each new section of the map. The way they swim up and say shmay has become pretty much something I say on the daily. Yo, did you just say fishmen? You know it's all the same guy, right? Like, like, there's not a whole race of these dudes or anything. What are you talking about? Look at a wiki. It's a bunch of different ones. And you're crazy! There's one fish! Because I completed Wind Waker HD and not the original release, I feel it's important to point out a couple of things that are different in the presentation. While both games use cell shading techniques, Wind Waker HD adds more lighting effects to the package. This manifests as more surreal in some areas, almost resulting in a washed out painterly look. Wind Waker HD also has native 1080p resolution for those who are into getting the most out of their living room setups. The original game ran at 480p and still looks great, but the developers really stepped it up for the remaster. Since Wind Waker HD was released 10 years after the original GameCube version, clearly they had some time to tinker with how they wanted things to look and run. The visuals of this game are absolutely the first thing people will notice. It can be polarizing, and the way Wind Waker looks definitely put me off the first time I heard about the game. It's probably why I avoided playing it for so long. Once you bind to the art style though, the rest of the game unfolds beautifully, and is a sumptuous feast for the senses. You might even say the visuals blow me away. What? No one's gonna call me on making a dumb wind joke, huh? It's one fish, the same one every time! With its focus on sea exploration, some smart changes to combat, the return of a few favorite Zelda tools, and the addition of several new ones, Wind Waker sets itself apart from previous Zeldas while laying the groundwork for future Zeldas down the line. Wind Waker captures what makes Zelda great while demonstrating that change is necessary for a long-running franchise to survive. Link spends boatloads of this game sailing around on his little ship, the King of Red Lions. While the Great Sea might seem intimidating, navigation isn't all that hard. You don't have to learn the differences between port and starboard or any other complex nautical terms. I mean, I did because my dream job is to one day captain a ship which I will name the Whiskered Walrus, or maybe the Bearded Maiden. But for the rest of you, it's not necessary. 
Unless you want to join my crew. Learning how to cut the sail at the right time so that the ship floats just so over the sunken treasure or blasting enemies with the cannon at the right trajectory takes practice. And I had a great time getting that feel down. It's rad when you hit the wind right and get a burst of speed. The sailing feels good, just like I knew it should. More than a lot of Zelda games, Wind Waker is deeply relaxing. There's a built-in cooldown between areas since you have to chart your courses and sail to the next island. This natural buffer really got me into the head of a wayward seafaring adventurer, and I appreciated that instead of just hauling off to the next big thing. I had to take a little break and observe my surroundings. Just another notch in Zelda's column of how it trained us all to be better people. You know, when the games aren't teaching us to break into others' homes and destroy their pots. Of course, all that sailing doesn't mean anything if you don't have a destination over the horizon. Fortunately, Wind Waker has plenty to do in that regard. Every island has something to do on it, and of course, the biggest destinations are the dungeons. There is an anatomy to the traditional Zelda dungeon. Find a way in, discover the unique dungeon item, use that item to smack the boss around, and reap the rewards. While dungeon exploration may seem like old news for Zelda, a lot of the fun is getting there at all. First, Link must determine which compass direction the island with the dungeon on it lies. Then, he's got to hop in his boat, change the direction of the wind, and sail his way there. The specifics shine hard in Wind Waker. Yes, there's a hook shot in this game, but this one fits over Link's hand like a gauntlet. Sure, there's an impossibly large hammer, but it's got a big ass spooky skull attached to the thinnest handle imaginable. Even the design of the Master Sword in this game is sweet. Once it's fully powered up, it crackles with energy, and the hilt snaps open like my wallet when Girl Scout cookies are on sale. I love the new items in this game. The Deku Leaf and Grappling Hook more than earn their places as some of Link's top items. Both can be used in and out of combat to make exploration easier and help Link get even closer to being the James Bond of Hyrule. The items in this game, to me, really show how Nintendo was angling for an open-world Zelda game for years, until technology could catch up with what they were aiming for. Since exploration is a key part of the Zelda experience, seeing which items are helpful outside of combat can make all the difference. Wind Waker's tools and items are awesome, even if Link is kind of the bag man of the Great Sea. Seriously, you've got the bait bag, spoils bag, and delivery bag to contend with throughout your adventure. The bait bag is great for luring birds and fish to do your bidding, and the spoils bag lets Link stock up items dropped from enemies, like delicious jellies to make potions. Wind Waker introduced the parry technique, a total game changer in the combat of the Zelda universe. While targeting an enemy, if you press a button just to the right time before they attack, Link will roll past and slash them in the back. This is essential for many of the tougher fights in the game against Dark Nuts and Moblins. Cut those beefy doggos out of their armor and let them have it. Today in stuff that is easy to forget about, but kind of amazing if you think about it, did you know that the Wii U has an internal gyroscope? While it's a key feature in a few Wii U exclusives like Star Fox Zero, it's more of a preference thing for games that were ports like Wind Waker HD. While the HD version supports gyroscopic aiming for the bow, telescope, and other items, it wasn't my favorite way to play the game, and I turned it off pretty quickly. When the original Wind Waker came out, some critics accused Anuma and team of padding out the length of the game with the sailing rather than having more fleshed out dungeons. However, I think that what's there is great, and there are even some more optional areas to explore for extra rewards. There's even a grueling combat gauntlet in the form of the Savage Labyrinth. 50 floors of monsters. One link, utter devastation this Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. I feel like the people who bounced off this game when it first came out because of the art style like I did really missed out. The dungeons are smart and clever and incorporate many new elements. There's even a couple of new areas that basically require Link to use the buddy system. Medley and Makar are both adorable and useful, helping Link navigate through areas with the power of flight. It's just so nice to have friends. You might say, I get by with a little help from them. Ultimately, making it through the main game wasn't too difficult for me. Maybe because I played so many Zeldas that I basically have the Triforce engraved on the back of my hand, the main quest in this game didn't give me a lot of grief. The attention to detail is what makes it fun, 
like looking at a beautiful painting and seeing all the tiny little brush strokes. For the record, I am banned from museums for standing inches from the canvas shouting the details. Magnificent. The side quests and mini games that maximize Link's inventory are memorable and unique. I'll always think back to how fun it was to train with Orca and fulfill his frankly ridiculous requirements to get the master rank. You want a thousand hits? I'll give you a thousand hits, the old fisherman. Wind Waker HD also streamlines a bunch of the clunkier stuff from the original release. Charting out the entire map is a breeze, and yeah, that is a wind joke. The addition of the Swift Sail in the HD Remaster makes getting around the Great Sea way easier. By using this new item, Link's sailing speed is doubled, and he doesn't have to pause and change the direction of the wind every few minutes. The Swift Sail saves serious seconds so she can sell more seashells by the seashore, Sally. Interestingly, Hero Mode has an on-off toggle from the start in the HD version of Wind Waker. In Hero Mode, hearts don't drop in the wild, making the game significantly more difficult. Since I didn't have to unlock it by beating the game the first time around, I could experiment with it at my leisure. And interestingly, the second quest isn't any harder than the original game, just lets Link run around in his PJs the entire time. There is a great lore bonus in the second quest, however. Some of the dialogue that was previously written in Ancient Hillian is translated to English when you play through it again, leading to some actual pretty big spoilers. Must be something about those pajamas. Link suddenly can understand everything around him more than he ever could before. Completing the Nintendo Gallery side quest took some time, but it's much easier to do in the HD version. To complete this quest, Link must use the Pictobox item to snap a picture of nearly every character and enemy in the game. And once he has those pictures, he must show those pictures to Karlov, a figurine maker. Then, he must wait a day for Karlov to create a figurine. Pre-HD, Link can only submit one photo per day and can only carry three pictures at a time, until the Deluxe Pictobox was unlocked. Fortunately, the HD version gives Link access to the Deluxe Picto Box right out the gate, which holds 12 pictures instead of 3, and gives the player a notification if the picture is useful to turn into a figurine. Another HD improvement is that Karlov can make 12 figurines per day instead of just one. Way more efficient and much less time consuming. Some remasters make a point to stuff an old game with a ton of new content, but this? I really appreciate this streamlining. Finally, collecting every figurine nets you one final figurine. Link sailing on the King of Red Lions, like the cover art for the game. If you read the description for this figurine, it says that Link is now master of the Nintendo Gallery. So, yay me? There's another smart move Nintendo made in this remaster the end game Triforce Collection quest. In the GameCube Wind Waker, Link had to find the fragmented pieces of the Triforce of Courage scattered throughout the land before he could confront Ganondorf. To do so, he had to find special corresponding charts. To read the charts, Link had to bring them to Tingle to then have them translated. Jesus, so many steps. And anything involving extended Tingle time just makes me nervous. The remaster puts five Triforce shards directly in chests and only has three shards that must be fished out of the ocean. Those three still require a map that must be decoded, but that's so much less than before. Not only does The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD look and sound amazing, the mechanics are interesting and buttery smooth to play with. The new additions to Link's toolkit are awesome, and the returning standbys get a lot of love too. Everything works together to create an experience that feels like the Saturday morning cartoon version of a Zelda game, and I am absolutely on board this boat. I am on board this boat. Someone stop me with these puns! There is a ton of stuff to collect in Wind Waker. Completely upgrading Link's inventory is always satisfying and genuinely helpful. Filling out the map squares to prove that you visited every corner feels great. Overall, I love Zelda games and helping Link reach his full potential as the reincarnation of the Hero of Time is a joy all on its own. Now I mentioned earlier about the extremely elaborate trading quest in Wind Waker. The best reward you get while completing this quest is the magic armor, which functions in Wind Waker H pretty much like the magic armor from Twilight Princess. As long as you wear the armor, you don't take damage, but Link does hemorrhage money 
like he just got a credit limit increase on his visa. In the original game, wearing that armor drained the magic meter. I like the rupee draining of the HD version a bit more, since it makes finding a random treasure chest full of rupees feel a little more useful. In fact, if I had one real beef with this game, it's that even though you find tons of awesome charts that lead you to the middle of the ocean to pull up treasure from the bottom of the sea, or stumble upon a tiny hidden rock in a far corner of the map, or even raid submarines full of marauding enemies, many of the rewards are just extra rupees. I mean, it still feels good to be rewarded at all for anything, but it might have been nice to have something besides cold hard cash. Another really interesting item you can get in this game is the Hero's Charm. After finishing 30 floors in the Savage Labyrinth, you receive a necessary Triforce piece. However, if you fight through another 20 floors, you will gain access to this weird looking mask. This toggleable item when equipped allows you to see the health bars of enemies that you are targeting. It's not game breaking by any means since most of the enemies go down in only a couple of swings, but it's an added bonus that further deepens the combat found within Wind Waker. For me, Zelda games are about the journey. Most don't really offer much replay value after you beat the main storyline, especially if you've made an effort to max out your carrying capacity and get all the heart containers on your way through. Wind Waker is gorgeous and each island has something memorable about it, but there isn't really that much to actually do after you've seen everything. I really can't say enough about how gorgeous this game is. I love playing it, even when I'm not actively doing anything to forward the main story or a side quest. Every aspect feels so carefully considered that it's easy to get immersed in the world. The characters are lovable and the heroic journey only gets deeper the further you get into the game. This Zelda game truly surprised me and I was genuinely pleased to have a deep and meaningful experience. When I completed The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD, there were two deaths. 49 squares of ocean explored and 49 separate fishermen fed. 134 figurines earned, including a special Link and King of Red Lions figurine after you earn all the rest of them. 20 heart containers found, including the three you get just for showing up. 8 Triforce shards collected. 75 hours of total playtime. And one seriously brutal Ganondorf death. Link is not f***ing around here, everyone. Dude will just straight up split your skull if you screw with him. In terms of completing the game, you don't really get much for finding 100% of the items, doing all the side quests, and even completing the main story. However, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD is so fun and gorgeous to play that I was still so compelled to do everything. And the HD version specifically makes figurine collecting so much more manageable. The sailing is so much faster with the swift sail that it makes any complaints about sailing moot. There were times that I actually sailed around normally just to take a little breather. Even I sometimes need a break. Every Zelda game has its strengths and weaknesses, and we all have our favorites. Wind Waker was controversial and polarizing upon its release, but has aged beautifully into what many consider an all-time classic. The HD remaster for the Wii U smooths out many rough edges and fixes some of the pacing issues, making this game an absolute pleasure to play all the way through. So, with that in mind guys, I give this game my completionist rating of... COMPLETE IT! That's all the time we have today, guys, so please, as always, let me know what you thought about today's episode somewhere on the internet. If you missed last week's video on the Messenger, guys, in case you didn't, one, do not sleep on that video. I put my heart and soul into that video. It's one of my favorites of the year. That game is flipping incredible, and it's so good that I'm giving away 50 codes for PC and Steam and a grand prize of a Nintendo Switch, a Pro Controller, and the game. So, if you want a chance to win those codes, that Switch, all that stuff, be sure to check out last week's video. There is a link for that in the description down below. When I'm done talking about it, you can click or tap it on the screen whenever it shows up. Um, we're gonna announce the winners next week on next week's video, so tune in for that. And if you won, chances are you've been contacted or you will be contacted in the very near future. Guys, I've been Gerard the Completionist. Thank you to Blue Apron for sponsoring today's episode, and we'll see you next week for another brand new episode. Bye. Double salute. Pistol double salute. Bye.